Okay, today we're going to look at polynomials, linear factors, and their zeros. So you're going to learn to write a polynomial from its factors and how to sketch a graph of a polynomial, and we're going to talk about multiplicity. So take a moment to read this. So if I have a polynomial, and this is just kind of how we write polynomials, and we tend to use P of X to represent a polynomial when we're talking about it. So <clears throat> X minus B is a linear factor, so you can factor it. If that's true, B is a zero of that function, it's a root, and it's an X intercept. So what are the zeros of the following function and graph a sketch of that function? So if we set this equal to zero, and we solve, that'll give us the zeros. Okay. So I'm going to divide everything by a negative, so I'm going to get rid of that negative because this is like negative one or you could actually look at it as 0 equals negative 1, x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. And if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm going to get x equals negative 1. Here, x equals 3. Here, x equals negative 3. So those are my zeros or my x-intercepts. So I've got an x-intercept at negative 1. I've got an x-intercept at 3. And I have one at negative 3. Now, these all have a multiplicity of 1, meaning they're to the first power. So what they're going to do is they're actually going to go through the axes. They tend to act like um, their multiplicity. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so if I were to look at this real quickly, I know that this is the degree of 3. I don't need to multiply this all out, but I know that I'm going to get x <clears throat> times x times x is going to give me x cubed. Okay. I know that my leading coefficient, if I was to divide that in, is negative. Okay, so we know that it's going to end down. It's cubed so that it's the opposite end behavior, so it's going to start um, up. So it's going to, our end behavior is going to look like that. So I'm just asking kind of for a rough sketch. The other thing that I can do is I can find the y-intercept, and that's where x equals 0. So if I was to put 0 in up here, I would get negative 1 times negative 3 times 3, which would give me a y-intercept of positive 9. So be right about there. So it's going to give me a rough idea of what my graph is going to look like. So I'm going to start up and we'll talk about how to find more specifics later. But we're going to start up, we're going to curve somewhere, we're going to go up to here, and we're going to end down. So it's going to look something like that. Notice that my degree is 3, and I've got one, two different turning points. Okay. So we talk about um, multiplicity. It has repeated linear factors, and we say that has a multiplicity at 0. So if I was going to look at that graph real quickly, Okay. And I've got x cubed, so if I set these equal to 0, x cubed equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. 
So x here equals 0 with a multiplicity of 3. And here, these are the same factors. So x equals 3, and it has a multiplicity of 2. And that affects your graph. So at the point 0, it's going to behave like a cubic. So if you remember, a cubic looks a little bit like this, right? So it's going to have that little funky curve in there, whether it's up or down. It's just going to look like this. Multiplicity of 2 is a quadratic, so it's going to look like this here. So here, when it's a multiplicity of 3, it's going to cut through the, or it's going to just kiss the axis. So if I was just doing a rough sketch, I'm going to have an intercept here and an intercept here. Okay, if I were to multiply all of this out, I've got 3, 4, 5, so I've got a degree of 5. Okay, and my leading coefficient is positive, so it's positive, so my end behavior over here is going to be up, it's odd, so it's going to be opposite. Okay, so this is going to start down and rise and end rising. So at <clears throat> 0, and we could do it x-intercept, it would be 9. Or y-intercept would be positive 9 because we've got negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. Or y-intercept. Sorry, actually, we don't have a y-intercept because if I put 0 in here, I'm going to get 0 times um, <clears throat> negative 3 times negative 3, which is 0. So the y-intercept is 0. So I'm going to start down here. At zero, I'm going to make a little curve. Okay. And someplace up here, we're going to have a turning point, a maximum. When it gets to three, it's going to behave like a quadratic. So right at three, it's going to behave roughly like this. Okay. So when I'm asking for a sketch, I'm not, this is kind of what I'm looking for right now. I'm looking for turning points. I'm looking for behavior. And so again, we talked about this already. Um, so with your 4x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 8x squared, if I were to factor this, I would factor out an x squared and get x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then if I was to factor that, I would get x minus 4 and x plus 2. So my zeros would be at x squared equals 0, x minus 4, and x plus 2 equals 0. So I would 0 with a multiplicity of 2, then 4 and its multiplicity is 1, and 2 its multiplicity is um, negative 2. So you notice that what they did was they kind of graphed that in. You can see you've got that quadratic here at zero. You got the linear, it's kind of like a straight line, just kissing it and linear there. So the volume in cubic feet of a CD holder can be expressed as this, okay? Or when factored as the product of its three definitions. So the depth is expressed as 2 minus x and assume the height is greater than the width. So they want us to factor that polynomial. So I get negative x cubed minus x squared plus 6x. And I'm going to factor out a negative 1 because I don't like to deal with negative 1s. So I get x cubed minus plus x squared plus 6x. If I factor out an x, I get negative x times x squared plus x plus or minus, this should be minus 6 here, I apologize, um, minus 6. And then my factors are negative x 
x minus 3 and plus 3 and x minus 2. So if I'm going to graph, find my zeros, x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. Now notice they use this as a factor. It's still going to give us the same 0 because 2 minus x, if I set that equal to 0, I get negative x equals negative 2. So x equals 2. Okay, so it says to graph the function and find our x-intercepts. So I've got 0 here, negative 3 here, and 2 are my zeros. Okay. And... Then I'm going to find my x-intercept, or my y-intercept, sorry, and my y-intercept is 0. I've got a negative, so it's going to go down, and it's going to start up. I've got no multiplicities, so it's going to look like um, the graph. Now to find the maximum, I'm just going to plug it into my calculator and I'm going to find um, the maximum and the minimums. So I'm going to just plug it into the graph menu. You guys know how to do that. All right, so using our graphing calculator, when I went to G-Solve, my minimum was negative 1.78 in 8.2 my maximum was at 1.19 and it was 4.06 so if I estimate just a little bit more than one and a half down to 8.2 right about here and we're gonna do a lot of estimating with this polynomial graphs just because you just do. Okay, so my graph is going to look like this, roughly. Okay, so my maximum value of my volume of my CD um, <clears throat> holder is going to be this 4 and 6 tenths. So my x-intercepts, um, what do they represent? That's where our volume is zero. When we talk about our realistic domain for this function, it's really just the parts where in the real world we can have the volume. So it's just realistically going to be this little part here. So our domain is going to be between zero and two, but it's gonna be greater than zero and it's going to be less than two because we can't have a negative volume. All right, so I've gone over uh, a real world example. I've gone over multiplicity and I've gone over roots and zeros. So have a math-tastic day.